Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke. Yeah. Hey guys, before we get started, don't forget to thumbs up the video and also comment to be eligible to get one of these Ariat hats. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a walk around on my 2004 Chevy Silverado. The main thing about my truck is obviously the service bed. It gets a lot of attention. I get a lot of questions about it. Uh, before the YouTube channel and then especially once we started the channel I uh, get a lot of questions about the bed still I also get a lot of other Hughes equipment owners sharing pictures of their beds But yeah, this is a Hughes equipment service bed Hughes equipment is located in Mount Vernon, Ohio I found out about these guys through some research basically I had seen one of their competitors beds I believe I'd seen a North Star bed at the Louisville Farm Machinery Show back in either 2015 or 2016 And when I seen that I liked it I had always wanted a service bed. I always just carved around a Montezuma toolbox and well, it just wasn't big enough. And it was always in the way. But the main thing I, especially at the time, I had a gooseneck camper. So I didn't want a tall service truck, like one that had, would have the bed this tall because it, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't work for a gooseneck trailer or a fifth wheel camper. But that North Star bed was steel. And in my experience, steel service beds here in Ohio don't last all that long. I wanted to try to find something aluminum and that's what led me to Hughes Equipment. This bed is 100% aluminum, uh, except for maybe some, I don't even know, there might be some pieces inside the bed or some of the mounting pieces that are steel, but everything else is aluminum. I believe they call this their utility hauler bed, basically because you can still haul a gooseneck or a, a uh, fifth wheel camper. And I had it kind of decked out, so it does not come with drawers. Uh, I have lights in here, it doesn't come with that. But I've had this, I believe I bought this in 2017 was the first year I had it. So, I've had it, oh, this is 2021, almost 22. So, uh, going on five years now. So, we're going to call this the five-year review. So, first and foremost, first thing I had was a set of drawers. I knew I wanted drawers for my sockets, my wrenches, uh, my, my screwdrivers and pliers. Main things, that are, like small hand tools that I'm going to use a lot. I believe they build these drawers. It's not a kit drawer. Uh, they build the whole thing, I believe. They're kind of small. This is a one-ton single wheel. One regret I do have is I didn't buy a dually because you get a much bigger box. And their dually pickups look really good. Or their dually beds make a pickup look great. But the drawers aren't super big because of the, the single wheel. But uh, they work. I mean... I keep my pliers here and I got a divider in here for different screwdrivers. I've got two of all my wrenches right there, or well, close to two of all of them. Uh, 3 8 drive sockets, quarter inch drive, standard and metric. And then this is the half inch drawer. Standard and metric, I think I go up to 25 mil and an inch and a quarter. So, works out really well no regrets with the drawers i believe you do get a shelf but you don't get drawers unless you, unless you pay for it i also had an inverter put in i don't know that i would do that again my theory was i mean i i used to keep a battery charger right here but you have to turn it on every time you get in and normally i would forget about it and it's just i don't know i mean it's nice to have some but i haven't used it in quite a while so i could probably go without that if i was specking her out again but on the other hand, it is nice when you need it. So down here, I keep hammers, pry bars, um, tool kits, stuff like that. And it's worked out well. Uh, after I had the truck for about a year, I had this switch. Uh, I had to take it up there to have something worked on. And I had them put me a switch in here. I already had the lights. But every time I would need the lights, I was already in the toolbox. The other switch that it came with is right here. Here we have our compartment lights, our strobe lights. And our work lights here. I'll show you these two also. And then our work lights, you're basically just turning your reverse lights on. Uh, in the dark, they do shine quite a bit of light back this way, and it works pretty well. You just got to remember to shut all these off or your battery will be dead. And you definitely have to remember shut your compartment lights off i've done that a few times grab something out of there or shut the door and forget all about it so i keep things like um like a level square some of that stuff and then most most of my milwaukee stuff is in this box here we have grease fluids oils 
and I just I didn't have a place for my half inch drive swivel socket so they end up in there so I do have quite a bit of stickers on this toolbox uh, full disclosure there are some that people sent and I completely lost them uh, if you don't see your sticker I'm very sorry uh, just uh, kind of in the hustle and bustle of planting season I did lose a few and then I did just get a whole bunch of stickers in the mail recently I just haven't had time to put them on yet I do have those ones I did put a backup camera on here when I bought this truck I had my previous truck had a backup camera and I couldn't go without so put a backup camera on here and it quit working still haven't fixed uh, it does have a good tailgate one of the only issues I've had with this truck is uh, on the tailgate though um, after a while had a couple welds crack right here. I did take it to Hughes and they fixed it right back up. Haven't had any issues since and that was four years ago. Um, you do have to watch stuff will get down in here when you, I think that might have been what cracked it. I think I had a bolt in here and I stepped on it. Anyways, now they use a channeled floor. So I believe that's one inch square or one inch, one inch rectangular tubing, aluminum tubing. And then I also have a B&W turnover gooseneck right there. Uh, it's built into the, into the bed. Got your headache rack there, a few tie down points, pretty sturdy. Have a uh, trailer connector there also. Works pretty well. Over here, I keep uh, towing supplies, and then I usually have a set of jumper cables in here, but Kayla stole them the other day. So, um, yeah, that's where I keep uh, my straps. Looks like I'm lacking a few. And hitch balls and receivers and stuff like that. Over here, this is the parts bin. This thing's kind of the catch-all at the moment, but we've got miscellaneous bolts, we've got combine parts, planter parts, corn head parts, big bolts that don't, don't need, that's actually a hitch bolt. Um, just all sorts of stuff in here. And then this one, probably one of my favorite things about the truck, is a little air compressor. So this is a Volt Air air compressor. Uh, Volt Air is the company I got it from. It comes in a cabinet, it is a designed to sit in the back of your truck like up against the wheel well well I took that cabinet off it fits in here my father's had one of these in his truck for about two decades now really love it it's really great for pumping up tires uh, little things like that I mean if you need a big air compressor this isn't it but I did put a storage tank right here so with it I mean you can blow a combine off you just you might be waiting on air a few times and then I've got a real craft reel in there and then this is just kind of an extension and here we've got uh, tire supplies, valves, um, used to have a plug, ki yeah, plug kit, gauges, anything to do with airing up tires and then different chucks for the hose. But really like that. Right now, oddly enough, it's not hooked up though. A little bit about the truck. This is a 2004 one ton Duramax. It has, let's just get in and check. So I'll be, I'm sure I'll be off if I tell you the miles. Pretty low. For the, especially for a 2004. Hundred and four thousand one hundred and forty-nine. When I bought this truck in 2016, it had fifty-eight thousand on it. So I looked pretty, pretty high and low for a low mileage truck at a price I could afford. When I bought the truck, the reason I bought the truck is I wanted a truck I could pay cash for, and that's what I did. I sold a 2015. Duramax that I'd ordered brand new and bought this one. I haven't had a truck payment since, which is part of the reason why we have the truck bed. I couldn't afford the bed without it. And the bed, while I could still do my job without it, it certainly makes life uh, easier. Yeah, there she is. The truck itself's in fairly good shape. We do have a little bit of a little bit of rust starting up here. At one time, some people recommended a different front bumper. I like a, I don't really want a big cow guard bumper, but I do need to replace that with something this winter. I just don't want it to look bad and it's kind of an eyesore. Also, I replaced when I bought this truck. The seats, it did have cloth seats. I don't like cloth seats when you're when you're working a lot. Cloth eventually starts to stink in my opinion and you start smelling uh, yourself from the day before. So leather or vinyl. That's uh, cat skin leather uh, upholstery. Just, you know, took the cloth seats out, or the, the upholstery off the, the cloth upholstery off these seats, put this on. It's held up okay, not the greatest, but it's okay. And then I put a, a different radio in here. Another question I get asked a lot is, is the truck tuned? It is not tuned. It has a five inch exhaust. I put the exhaust on when I bought the bed. I had to take my old bed off. So when I had the bed off, I went ahead and put the exhaust kit on. 
So it has a five inch straight pipe. No, it's not straight pipe. It does have a pass through muffler. And then I have a SMB air intake. That's it. Other than that, truck's stock. Um, I have, you know, done some maintenance things. I had to replace some fuel lines, all the brake lines, stuff like that. But overall, this truck's been a pretty good truck. The main goal of the way I have my truck set up is that if I break down, say the planter has an issue and I have a bearing go out, I want to be able to replace, repair, or at least get the parts off of the planter with this truck and go get replacement parts if I don't have them on me. I don't have a welder on here. I don't have a crane on here. I'm not looking to do that kind of stuff with it. This is to get me up and going again. That's, that's how I kind of set this truck up. But yeah, there's kind of a look at my used equipment service truck after I've had it for five years. So I don't have a whole lot of regrets on it. Um, the one thing, like I said, if I was doing it again, I'd probably buy a dually. Uh, I never really liked a dually. They always, I don't like how they stick out, but with the Hughes box, I mean, it kind of contours a little bit and it just, it looks good. Check out their website. I'll put a link in the description and you can see how they look with a dually. Other than that, I'm trying to think if there's really any regrets I have. So I'd maybe go without the without the inverter now um, other than that that's about it I, I like the drawers I like the where I have them placed I like having the light I would highly recommend lights if you do end up specking out of bed of all the the fancy stuff on toggle switches I have the the compartment lights are definitely top priority I would go without the strobe and the work lights before I'd go without the compartment lights I always said I'll just carry a flashlight but it's way easier to flip a switch and be able to see all your tools when you're working on stuff you're not really happy when you have to work on stuff in the dark anyways might as well be able to see what you're doing uh, other than that I don't think I would change anything in this box like as far as putting a drawer I mean it does this job pretty well I mean one more set of drawers would be nice somewhere or one more drawer either i couldn't put it in this box maybe another drawer in that box that's pretty much it like i don't really need drawers back here although if i did i'd probably make one a bolt bin i would maybe do that instead of having all those trays in there and then i could use this compartment for something else maybe have two drawers here and have them bolt bins i'd still have plenty of room for my hitches and uh my my jumper cables but yeah there you go guys that's uh that's the whole walk around on the bed now, this truck bed is not this clean and organized very often. In fact, I just finished cleaning out after harvest, so we'll go ahead and roll that in here now. And I'm going to put some ice on my morning. So today, I am recovering from a procedure. Since I can't do a whole heck of a lot of physical activity right now, I thought it would be a good time as I'm recovering to clean out my truck from a harvest mess. So if you're not a farmer, your trucks get, at least mine do, they get pretty overwhelmed with coats, hats, tools, lunch boxes, just all sorts of stuff during harvest and planting season. They get pretty disgusting and I try to clean them out in the winter, after harvest, and then also in the spring slash summer when we get done planting, when things slow down a little bit. So that's what we're going to do here. The front isn't terrible. We've got a lot of clutter, a lot of dirt, a lot of dust, but the back, oh, the back. Yep, this is gonna take a while. Case IH planter parts. Got the floor cleaned out of the truck. I don't have a rear floor mat. Um, mine got destroyed, but anyways, vacuum the truck out. Much, much better. Now I just got to figure out what to do with all this stuff. So, like I said, we've got. Well, that's actually Kayla's Christmas present. We throw that over there. But used bowl, bipod, beef jerky, radios that the battery's dead in. That's actually the manual. Camera gear, binoculars ammunition for jackets and these are all tools that I had bought to replace or restock my truck and I just haven't done that yet so I'm gonna do that now I'm restocking most of my truck with stuff from Harbor Freight like this ratchet here dad has one of these things and well to be honest with you I like it apparently some people wipe their tools off so I know some people are probably gonna give me crap for buying Harbor Freight brand but 
not a full-time mechanic. Uh, I fix my stuff when it breaks and that's it. So I can't justify buying all snap-on stuff. Uh, Cobalt, Craftsman, Icon, Pittsburgh, that's usually what I buy. Odds are it's gonna get lost before it gets broken. <laughs> These are the nicest ratchets I've ever had. This is what we've got going on in here right now, just mass pandemonium. Stuff laying everywhere. Need to go through this. So the truck is all put back together. Got my tools all organized and everything. I'm gonna pull this thing out of here in the morning and we'll actually do a walk around on it. I'm not gonna do this tonight, it's starting to get dark. So yeah, that's, that's it for night. We'll be pick this up here in a little bit. I gotta go put some ice on my ball. Man, we got done with that project just in time. It's really raining out there now. So just came back to the office here and thought we would go over our bespoke post boxes we got in the mail. So. As mentioned earlier, Bespoke Post is sponsoring this video. Now you may be wondering what is Bespoke Post? Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that specializes in delivering some, some pretty cool stuff from some kind of under the radar brands. So each box that you get from Bespoke has around $70, $70 worth of value in it and it only costs $45. And the way it works, you go on to their website, you take a quiz when you're signing up and that quiz asks you a series of questions and through those series of questions, they're able to determine what kind of boxes are best suited for you. So most of the, most of the boxes I got are kind of geared towards uh, activities I'm interested in. But one cool thing about it, if it's something you're not interested in, you do get a preview of the box that's about to be sent to you. And you have the ability to skip that box uh, altogether or exchange it out for a different one. So by doing that, you're only paying for products you actually want. Uh, you're not just getting a box of randomness that you like that you don't actually want or need. Another cool thing about Bespoke Post is 90% of the products they use come from small businesses, many of which are located in the United States. So we have four boxes from Bespoke Post right now. First one we got here is called the Grounds Box. And in that we, we have my favorite product of this box, this Sog Knife. I'm probably going to use this a lot. This is probably going in my hunting bag tomorrow. Tomorrow's deer season. Uh, hopefully we have a, have an, a reason to use this. If nothing else, we'll at least uh, open our beef jerky with it tomorrow while we're hunting. Very sharp. Indeed. Here we have a camp carabiner. So we might use this to attach some stuff to our pack. We have reusable zip ties. So that's always handy for you know tying up cordage, stuff like that. And then we have a, a seat. Over here in box number two, you guys know me, I am a sucker for Damascus knives. We have the flip box and it comes with a Damascus pocket knife. A nice little knife, perfect size for everyday carry. Does come with a leather sheath as well as a sharpening rod. And then down here we have the trail box. So the trail box you get, you get several things here. You get a survival book. My son and I love reading these together so that'll be, that'll be some, some handy reading material. Probably reading that here in a little bit when he's going to bed. Got a, an ammo box here, a nice leather sheath knife. I'm just gonna put the camera down for a second here. Whoop! Dropped our book. But we do have a have a hook on the back of this knife, oiled very nicely. Nice wood handle. Overall, very nice knife. It's kind of a toss-up between which one of these is my favorite, but this also comes in the trail package. And we also have a commando wire chainsaw. That'll be interesting to try out and a paracord bracelet. And over here we have the CHOP package. Pretty self-explanatory, right? If you're ready to get your bespoke package, check the link in the description where you can use code BRIAN20 to get 20% off your first package, or just go to bspk.me slash BRIAN20, and you, know, you can get it all right there. But that's all for this video, folks. I'm gonna finish peeling my oranges here and you know, go start reading some survival books. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and we'll see you in the next one.